Hi friends, welcome to Embrace the Question. This is Steve and I am going to divert a little bit this week from the seven churches of Asia, which we were going through in the book of Revelation. And I am going to talk very briefly about three things that we can do to stay up in down times. It's just kind of oppressive out there right now. And the Lord is leading me to provide a word of encouragement for everyone that listens to this. And it gave me a nice diversion from the norm. It, this is helping me too. So here are three things that we're going to talk about. The first one is physiological, which is something that my place of employment is encouraging everyone to do, and that is to exercise. Exercise releases endorphins, and if you are able to do it, you will feel better. I think there's plenty of information out on the web about exercises and the benefits of them, so we're not going to stay on that, but it bears mentioning. Number one, exercise. Number two, this is a social thing, okay? Stay connected. Stay tethered to somebody in your church, a good friend. Try to avoid those who sap the strength out of you, but rather who are an encouragement to you and also try to be an encouragement to them. The way the spirit works is what we give away is what we receive. So we are designed to be rivers and not lakes or ponds. So that which we give, we make room to receive more. That's an easy one too, I think. Stay tethered to someone who is encouraging. Limit your time on the, on the news and probably, yes, even though I said this is social, social media. Limit all of that if you can find safe places to dwell on these mediums, then stay there. But otherwise, very much limit your time on these, these types of medias. All right, let's move on to number three. This is the third thing. And now we've moved into the spiritual, and this is where we're going to spend the most of our time. Seek ye first the kingdom. You say, well, that's about the most cliche thing. Well, I know. It is, right? Seek first the kingdom. But I also believe that most people have a very limited understanding of this statement. All comes from Matthew 6. It's uh, the famous Matthew 6, 24 passage about be anxious for nothing. Take no thought about your life. Take no thought about what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, what you're going to wear. And... <clears throat> Jesus is really expounding on this whole stop worrying thing. And it is honestly one of the most encouraging chapters in all of Scripture. Take no thought. But he ends it with Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things that you need will be added back unto you. It, it really needs to be taught more than it is. What are we seeking when we seek first the kingdom? I've always kind of thought that just meant pay, pay more attention to spiritual things. Go to church. Read my Bible. Talk about God with my friends. These are, these are great things. But is that what it means to seek first the kingdom? Understand this, that the kingdom is not something external, it is something internal. The kingdom of heaven is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So those are three internal things that we need to be meditating on. Now, don't get freaked out that I use the term meditate. Don't, uh, don't tune me out because they use that term. The New Age movement has cheated us out of a biblical concept, a, a, a foundational thing, meditation, meditate on the things of God. And we 
a lot of times write it off as not of God, but we need to meditate on the things of God. So what is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost? Righteousness. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's Romans 3.21. How do you meditate on that? You just, you just repeat it. You convince yourself of that truth. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am the light of the world. I am the salt of the earth. These are things that Jesus said you were. We are his hands and feet on the earth. As I am, so are you on the earth. That's, that's part of this realization. That's one third of the kingdom we have to realize. Okay? Righteousness. Meditate on I am righteous. Number two, peace. Romans 8, 5 through 8. That bears, that bears actually reading. Romans 8, 5 through 8. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on things of the Spirit. For to set the mind on, the, on flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. What are we talking about? For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. In the Greek, that word please God is actually agree with God. Those who are caught up in the flesh cannot agree with God. About what? If I'm so wrapped up in fleshly things and God is trying to tell me, you are righteous, you are accepted, you are my son, and I am well pleased with you. If I'm wrapped up in the flesh, I can't agree with him on that. We don't agree. And that's detrimental to me. So, peace. We, we live in the Spirit. That is so hard, isn't it? The reason the sons of God are not revealed yet is because we don't walk in the Spirit. For as many walk in the Spirit, they are the sons of God. They will be called the sons of God. I never said any of this was really easy. The flesh does get in the way, and sometimes we might need to to do something about that. One of the best ways to do that is to fast, if possible, from time to time. That crushes the flesh. And when the flesh is crushed, the spirit rises up. And all of a sudden, this stuff starts to really make sense. And our mood rises up too. Okay? Peace. That's righteousness and peace. Now, the third one is joy. Joy in the Holy Ghost. You know there's 100 and 71 verses in the, in, in the Bible about joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Not happiness. It's not talking about happiness per se, because you can be grieving and have joy. But joy is, is a word that means gladness or calm delight. It's an awesome Greek word, which I will not pronounce for you. Gladness or calm delight. So even when things aren't going your way, you can have a knowledge inside of your righteousness. You are fully accepted. You can have peace even in the middle of a storm. You can be like Jesus who walked on the waves. And joy in the Holy Spirit. It is your strength. And perhaps the missing element in your routine and mine to a great deal is meditating on these things. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, what, whatever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there's any virtue 
And if there's any praise in these things, think on these things. I love this word, think on. I was looking, I'll be honest, I was looking for the word meditate here. Meditate on these things. And certainly, that's what we need to be doing. But the Greek is logizomai. Logizomai. And it means take an inventory of these things. How awesome is that? Take an inventory. How am I doing on those things in my life that are worthy of praise, that are lovely, that are pure, those things? It means to reckon, suppose on these things. Esteem these things in your life. Well, so that's it. Psychologically, exercise. Socially, stay tethered to somebody who will lift you up. And spiritually, meditate on the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. Because when you do, you will realize everything else that you need. It gets added to you. It manifests. This just wakes, wakes your awareness up. And these things manifest all around you. That's, that's what the scripture says. So I hope this is encouraging. Like, subscribe, helps this channel. And hey, peace to you in these times. Bye-bye.